We are reaching the end of 2024, and more and more AAA studios are ditching their in-house engines to use Unreal Engine 5. So what we're going to talk about today is why these studios are doing it, and more importantly, will this mean better games out of these studios? So start out with, I'm Ojiro. I've been a game developer for over 15 years. Uh, if you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. So for the longest time, in-house engines were the only option that you had. You did not have an off-the-shelf solution to get it so that your game was playable on a PC or a console. As part of making a game, you would say, do we make just this game by itself or do we make an engine so that we can make multiple games using that same engine? Some notable engines that are getting retired in lieu of uh, Unreal 5 are the Red Engine, which came out in 2007 with The Witcher. The Red Engine 2 was used for The Witcher 2, Red Engine 3 for Witcher 3, and the Red Engine 4 was infamously used for Cyberpunk. This would have uh, CD Projekt Red being sued, and as part of the complaint, they said it was virtually unplayable on the current generation Xbox or PlayStation systems due to an enormous number of bugs. And a lot of these bugs were because of the engine. It had a lot of issues. They eventually fixed these bugs, and it became a very beloved game. However, uh, this look is going to be the last title using the Red Engine out of CD Projekt Red. Now, another studio uh, is Bethesda. They have the Creation Engine. It was released in 2011 with Skyrim. And more recently, we have the Creation Engine 2, which had Starfield, which was eh. And finally, one of my favorite engines, because of all the time I spent playing Bad Company 2, is uh, the Frostbite Engine out of EA. It came out. And they said, we're only making this for first person shooter games. And then almost immediately EA said, you you need to make this for basically everything that we have. You know what the most recent Frostbite engine game out of EA is? Dragon Age Veilguard. I sincerely hope that EA starts using Unreal Engine 5 as soon as possible. Now, what are the benefits to using Unreal over your in-house engine? So first off, Having an, uh, an engine in-house that you are maintaining takes a tremendous amount of not only engineers to maintain that engine, but also quality assurance and testing to make sure that that engine is running as intended across all of your supported games. In the case of Unreal, uh, I don't know their current employee count right now as of 2024. However, due to the lawsuit um, Epic Games Inc. versus Apple Inc., we learned through Exhibit DX4376 that as of 2019, the engine had 564 employees working on it at that time. We can assume now that as more people have adopted uh, Unreal Engine and are now using it, and we've had a tremendous number of very big announcements from the Unreal team in terms of a lot of these very fancy things that the engine can do in regards to especially environments and generation of them, that a lot more people are working on the engine right now. Another big benefit that we see out of Unreal is that it supports all platforms right out of the box. I can have a game that runs on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and the Xbox Series X and uh, S, uh, I can have it run on the Steam Deck. I can have it run on Steam VR. It, if it is out there, it is supported by Unreal. And Unreal makes sure that everything is tested at every stage so that when they make these improvements, it is supposed to be compatible with whatever platform there is. Another huge thing that a lot of people probably don't care about, but I as an engineer really care about, is uh, being able to see the source code for the engine. Every so often, whenever we're using uh, someone else's code, we have some kind of bug that is encountered on some, it's usually some fucking mobile platform because there's always some device that's a pile of shit. But once we have that kind of issue, we end up having to dive into uh, whatever ability we have to try and figure out why something is broken and then once we look into all this really shitty machine code, we're like, oh, I see the problem. 
uh, you guys didn't do it like a, a null check here to make sure that this memory was accessible and it's only an issue on this specific device. And when it is an issue where you have the code to read, you can look at it and you can say, oh, I see it's right here. In the case of Unreal Engine, you have access to the source code right now as an individual. You can go and you can join the Epic Games organization on GitHub. You can view the code and you can look at how many contributors are currently contributing to the game engine. Uh, last I checked, it was like 669 people. Not all of them are people that work at Unreal either. So what happens is Unreal Engine gets a lot of the benefits of a lot of open source projects where people from all over the world can contribute if there is some kind of bug that is affecting them. But also, if you want to take Unreal Engine the, on all that code and you want to modify it, you can just copy it. Now, another big engine in the market right now is Unity. Now, Unity, uh, as soon as they pushed out a runtime fee, I believe it was last year, they really destroyed their reputation in the industry. They've rolled that back now and are trying to rebuild their image. However, if I wanted to get access to Unity source code, the only thing that I saw where I could get access to it had people quoting at $40,000 a year just to read the code. You can't modify it. You just read the code. So you get the privilege of reading their code to figure out what they broke so that you can then ask them to fix it. It's, uh, it's pretty stupid. Now, aside from all that, let's look at for these game companies when they actually adopt it, what are their big benefits? One of the biggest benefits is training time. I don't have to have someone come in and say, oh, I need to teach you this proprietary engine and how it works. If someone knows how to use Unreal, well, they know how to use Unreal. You can pretty much say, oh, this is the tools and the practices of our company. As long as you follow these, the training time is significantly shortened. Um, another big issue for right now in the current state of the game industry, because the game industry is always a very volatile place to work. There's a lot of layoffs all the time. There's especially a lot now because we've got a lot of really garbage games coming out. And when you have a, a position open and people are applying to that position. If you have a really great candidate coming in, let's say they have two offers and they are effectively the exact same. They're excited about both projects. The pay is the same. The commute's the same, everything except one is Unreal Engine 5 and one is a proprietary engine. They're going to pick Unreal Engine. Learning some proprietary engine is garbage. It, it helps you not at all. You get to tell some stories about how much of an experience it was, but it, you're, you're not helping your career. Whereas if you're working in Unreal Engine, you can take that wherever you want. If you end up having to leave AAA, okay, well, tons of indie games get made with Unreal Engine. Tons of mobile games get made with Unreal Engine. You have a lot of options for your career so that you can stay as marketable as possible in the industry. It's also a big benefit with Unreal where even though it's built for first person shooter games, there's a ton of games that have their own art styles that are very unique and Unreal has that capability for them. You can have basically anything that you can put your mind to. I know a lot of people when they hear Unreal Engine um, for a lot of the games that come out, they look very, eh. they're just like pretty much store assets they throw together animations and it's there's just they're lifeless they look fine some like the environments look great and then you actually play the game and you're or see it being played and you're just like this is not this is not a good game but you're gonna have that with any kind of engine you say a lot of that with unity where people would just do asset flips and get whatever quick unity build out there uh, you can see this even with RPG Maker, where some people will make these old style RPGs just get out the bare minimum and try and sell it on Steam. That is always the case. You're always going to have a lot of really shitty games going out and you really just got to ignore them. And the good ones will percolate to the top over time where you're like, oh, that's an interesting game. Let me give that a shot. It is especially true for games that are very unique. Now, there's an extra benefit for a lot of the studios that are under the Microsoft umbrella. Microsoft very badly wants to break into the mobile market. They 
are not doing that great of a job with the Xbox market right now, especially when you compare it to PlayStation, where they have a lot larger numbers on PlayStation. Microsoft wants that extra, like, I, I honestly forget what they talk about when they're like, we really want to work in the mobile market. Cause it's just, I just look at it and I'm like, yeah, you guys are idiots. You're not going to be able to pull that off because if they really wanted to pull that off, they'd make a bunch of gotcha games like Nikkei goddess of victory. And I, <laughs> I don't think their DEI departments would let that happen because they are allergic to money. Now the, I think the, all of that stuff aside, the big question for the consumers is always, okay, well, am I going to get better games? And so if I have a, a fancy car and I give it to a shitty driver, they're probably going to crash that car, right? So this is kind of the case with Unreal Engine. You're going to have a lot of these studios that are just bad studios. I think... Uh, Bethesda is a bad studio. I don't think they have it in them to make good games anymore. Um, I think a lot of EA studios have gotten to suck. Like, look at, look at Dragon Age Veilguard. Do you think Veilguard would be any better if it were on Unreal Engine? No. It would just be a different engine to render your top surgery scars, and it's going to be a pile of shit game. It looks terrible. No matter like th that drive, that creativity that you saw in like Dragon Age Origins, you, there's not there anymore. That studio has lost that ability. I don't think anything can save that studio. There are so many studios right now where that it's like that creative spark is gone, where they come out with something and it's just unimpressive. It's something that I don't even think they would want to play themselves. And an engine's not going to solve that. That it is, it is purely up to, I wouldn't even say the individual contributors, because you can have the best engineers and the best artists working on a project. If the leadership of these studios is bad, it's, it doesn't matter. It's going to be just as, just as terrible of a product. Uh, you had a lot of very smart people that worked on Forspoken. That game was ass. If we look at Elder Scrolls 6, for example, even if Bethesda, I know but some people are like, oh no, well, we really think Creative Engine 2 is really, or Creation Engine 2 is really great. Starfield sucks. It's, I've, I've played pretty much every Bethesda game except Starfield because every time I look at it, it is just one of the most unimpressive games that I look at. It looks so boring. If I, if we then look at what they're trying to push right now, where they're trying to sell mods to people, you know, they're thinking in their minds, well, we'll just have Elder Scrolls six. Let's have it so that everyone has to buy their mods instead, because if we just are able to capture that money on the mods, instead of having everyone sell their weird set or like put up their free sex mods on like whatever website, we should be able to make billions. I, I don't think they have it. I think we were better off with the spiritual successor from some kind of indie developer than anything out of Bethesda. Cause it's going to take them what another 10 years to get this game out at this rate. They're unimaginably slow. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter if they use unreal engine or not. We will probably see a lot less weird physics bugs out of that studio. Cause they've, I know it's like a selling point where it's just like, oh, look at the funny Bethesda bug. But in the same vein, I'm looking at it as an engineer and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with your team where you guys can't fix this stuff? This has been an issue for like a decade. If I've got people working for me and they're like, hey, I've got this bug that's just been consistently here for the past 10 years, I would be like, why the fuck are you working here? You're literally retarded. I don't, to me, I'm looking at it from like a quality perspective and I'm just like, do you care? And I know a lot of these people care. I just don't think the people above care. I don't think they care that there's bugs. I don't think they care that their games are boring. I genuinely think places like Bethesda, where they've leaned heavily into mods, is they're just like, don't worry, the users will fix it for us. And uh, yeah, an engine is not going to fix that. As for CD Projekt Red, though, while Cyberpunk 2077 was a catastrophe on launch, 
it has become a fantastic game. If they are able to keep that level of quality that we saw at the end of 2077 and use Unreal Engine, I think that their next Witcher game and this Cyberpunk sequel they're working on have the capability of being truly fantastic games. Uh, I think they're going to be great. I would point out as something for you guys to just keep in mind, with Unreal Engine, it is very easy to make very beautiful environments. And whenever a game is like, look at the environments and how pretty they are, I would recommend that you look at that as a huge red flag. Because to me, if your game is not fun with play, like PlayStation 2 level graphics, your game is not going to be fun with PlayStation 5 level graphics. So every time I hear some developer where they're like, look at how beautiful our environments are, my immediate thought in my mind is your game probably sucks. Pay extra attention to the gameplay. Sometimes the environments are beautiful and the game's great. But environments are one of those things where a lot of shitty studios try to pull the wool over your eyes to get you lost in the weeds, basically, where you're like, well, look at all the beauty. And then you're looking at the environment instead of looking at the actual like combat or little things you're doing. Focus on the gameplay. Don't let some studio bullshit you with the like stuff they get for free out of Unreal Engine and focus on the gameplay because the gameplay is the most important thing. And while these studios are going to save a lot of money um, in not having to upkeep these big teams for building their own engines, <laughs> you know they're not going to lower their prices. You're still going to end up paying like $70 or $80 for a lot of these places because fuck you, I guess, right? But uh, that's all I got to talk about for this right now. Um, I uh, hope you all enjoy your mornings, days, evenings, nights, all that jazz. Uh, if you'd like other games related content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And otherwise, I hope to see you guys in a future video. Farewell.